So you've had your car ceramic coated, now what? I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. Today, we're gonna be taking this beautiful M6 and reviving that ceramic coating. It's been on there for a while, sort of lost a bit of its youth, a bit of its luster, and a bit of its beading. We're gonna bring all that back with a proper decontamination wash. We read all the comments on YouTube, and y'all ask over and over again, how do I take care of my ceramic coated vehicle? This could be a vehicle with ceramic gloss. This could be a vehicle with quick beads or it could be a vehicle with a professional grade ceramic coating like one of ours or another brand, whatever. Yeah. You found this video because you wanna take care of this. You spent money or time or effort or whatever to get this thing really protected at one point. This is sort of a yearly maintenance kind of wash, but it's also one that you can take a lot of nuggets of wisdom from for your every week, every two week, every month, whatever you do at home, all of the principles will still apply. Exactly. If there's anything that I would say that you wouldn't be doing every single wash, it's the decontamination towel, but with these proper techniques, you can use that too. You could use the water spot remover, iron remover, like if you wanna use this and do this every wash, you could. Right. I'm not saying do it this way, but if, if you're just like, well, how often do I do this? Just know that all the principles apply. You don't need to use all the steps. And if you've ever had a high performance German car, you know that the brakes are high performance as well. And they put out a lot of brake dust, meaning your wheels will probably turn red rather quickly. You've got the iron remover in your hand. I have the iron remover. What I'm doing with the iron remover is we're pre-spraying these wheels to get the iron remover working for us, doing what it needs to do. Very important, do not do this on hot wheels. So you wanna do this, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, okay, you weren't kidding. So look at the back wheel, same deal. A few areas that I may have missed spraying. We'll just add a little more onto that. And there we go. Okay, I see you wheel. Yeah, yeah that iron remover's working pretty hard. The iron remover's doing its thing. Now we're gonna add our friend, All Clean. This is diluted 15 to one. And yes, I'm putting it all over the body. Of course, on the wheel. So this step, All Clean our All Purpose Cleaner, diluted at 15 to one. It's interesting because for your yearly maintenance wash, this is what you'd want to do. But if this is more of an every couple of weeks kind of wash, uh, you don't need all clean all over the paint like this because you do have a ceramic coated vehicle. So this is how do I get this coating to snap back, but also how do I take care of this? So I'm just sort of interjecting where uh, you may or may not need iron remover on the wheels. I don't use that every wash, but maybe every couple washes to keep up on it, at least once a month. Uh, and you certainly don't need all clean across broad swaths of your coated vehicle unless you're doing this deep dive wash. Yeah. And if you're maintaining your vehicle on a regular basis, honestly, just the soap or rinseless wash is all you ever need. Exactly, but people want to know the ins and outs. So I'm sort of explaining, you could also do this every wash if you wanted, right? Oh, if you yeah, want like, to, by all means. Uh, we know there's people out there who, who want the ultimate every step of the way they're passionate like we are, Ivan. Exactly. So there we have it. Nick, I think you like using a foam cannon, right? Oh, I love using a foam cannon. Uh, usually we mix it 32 ounces of water to one ounce of incredible suds. I'm pretty sure I eyeballed this, so we're Might be a little thicker close. knowing you. Yeah. You gave me freedom to do the foam cannon today, and I said, okay, I'm gonna do the glug glug method. But no, I tried to keep it at about an ounce. Yep. All right, so we're gonna stack some foam here. Better to do this out of direct sunlight because we're doing this with a lot of dwell time, right? We don't want the sun, that hot sun, etching any of this in, uh, but we have a controlled environment here. All right, she's foamed up. If there's one thing I like to do is have fun with foam, mission accomplished. Plenty of dwell time there with the incredible size. So we're just letting that dwell. Uh, we're gonna go after the wheels now, right, Ivan? Exactly, we'll get the wheels and tires done. That way, while the foam is dwelling, we have the little base layer of all clean in there, just helping break it down even more. On the wheels, obviously, well, I see yellow, I see brown, I see purple from the iron remover. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. Now on big, wide open wheels like this, I like to start with the barrel brush and work from the back forward. And these wheels, despite having all this brake dust on them, are actually very clean. 
There's no accumulations on it. Not much space between the caliper and the wheel. And as Nick was saying, it's a multitude of colors coming off of this. These spokes are actually quite thin, so we can just use the spoke brush for its name. Some people call it a lug nut brush, and we'll use it there as well. Oh, you went for the, the whole wheel cleaning with that brush? Yeah, the spokes are so thin that it's easy to get into. That's true. And these wheels are not very damaged. They're, they were dirty, but it's nothing that's been sitting on there for decades. And that's why we always say is like, if you keep up cleaning your vehicle, it can get dirty. It just is much easier to clean if you've done regular maintenance and protection and that kind of thing. Exactly. Go out and live your life. You know, we're not saying make it a garage queen. Just keep oh. up on it, protect it. And yeah. No, this vehicle definitely fun. gets driven. It's got over a hundred thousand miles, so it's not exactly new. Over a hundred thousand? Yep. Wow, I did not know that. It's well maintained. I believe you'll need this. <laughs> Now there's different ways to rinse a car, Ivan, and you've coached me over the years on how to be an efficient rinser. Right. But we are going to go for more rinsing here. Exactly. So we don't need to be like perfectly thorough with this step. Right. Now the next step, we're gonna be using the water spot remover. Water spot remover can be used at different times in the process. Because we're gonna be using the iron remover and the clay towel, we're gonna to be using the water spot remover now. So we use this even before we wash? Even before the contact wash. We know that basically there's nothing left on this paint as it is. The incredible suds combined with the uh, All Clean has done an amazing job of cleaning off the paint. But the paint is still a little flat. And the water spot remover is gonna remove that embedded salt out of there. Then when we do the contact wash, we're really getting deep into it. So, so we could go in a different order, but you think this is the... For a coating maintenance, this is the way to go. Perfect. Now, if you want to just get a little bit of soap off here. Yep. The mirror sort of dribbled down on us there. There so was also a speck of dirt that I was like, I wonder if I could do this before the contact wash if it would come off the mirror. And sure enough, pressure washer took it off. So whether it was the coating, the incredible suds, the dwell time, whatever, pressure washer, that dirt, whatever that was stuck on the mirror is now gone. Yeah. And yes, all these products are coating safe. That's a question we get a lot. Is this coating safe? Well, if you have an actual good ceramic coating on your vehicle, just about anything is coating safe because a coating is chemically resistant. And the water spot remover, if you use it at a different step of the process, you can absolutely agitate it in. So like, not to complicate things, but you could do the contact wash first because you don't want to listen to us. And then you can do the iron remover because you don't want to listen to us. And then you can do the water spot remover. Nick, can I? Agitate the water spot remover in with a wash mitt after I spray it on. Absolutely, you can, yep. but just this process is gonna work great for you. Trust us, try this way because uh, for the longest time I never agitated in water spot remover. I just sprayed it on, rinsed it off. And then people started asking, well, could I agitate it in? I'm like, of course you can. And I started doing it and it was like, oh yeah, this works great too. Yeah, what you agitate it with though is very important. You do not wanna use the decontamination towel to agitate this. And water spot remover is acidic. So if you're gonna be agitating it, be like Nick, wear your gloves. Very important to do. And we'll let this sit for a minute. We don't wanna let it dry on the surface. There we go, all the way around. Get that mirror. I am gonna be a little more thorough with this step. Yeah, we will be washing, however, after this. So right. I guess I could treat this a little bit more casually again with the rinsing. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Ivan, the water beading has just snapped back. It's back, yeah. It's absolutely back. And that is what's amazing about the water spot remover. I'll get to rinsing in a second, but the water spot is going to remove the embedded salt in that coating, and you're gonna see the beading snap back. There's nothing in here to add beading. It's simply restoring the beading on your paint. Look at those water beads. So, one cap full, all you need in your wash book. That's it, not two? No, no, no glug glug with me. All right, here we go. Here we 
we go. But there's still a foam cannon. There's still a car to be foamed. So now, after water spot remover, we're gonna foam incredible suds and wash. Right, and if we look at the car, a lot of people go, why don't you just dry it, it's perfect. But yeah, we can still clean it deeper and more intensely. As you can see, the paint was very clean before we started washing it here because of the first steps we did. So even though we didn't touch the paint, it was basically clean. Yeah, oftentimes we'll foam, rinse, foam, incredible suds, but the water spot remover just added that extra level of pre-clean. Yeah, and now we're making sure we've taken absolutely everything off the paint. So when we go to use the decontamination towel and the iron remover, all we're doing is removing what little contamination there could be. And the beauty of a coated vehicle is that I'm using no pressure on this wash mitt and it is just gliding over the paint. Just gliding. Woo! I've done hood only on that side. You want me to hit the front bumper? Yep, please. Okay. And no, we don't have a separate rinse bucket. With this method, there's no need whatsoever. We have an extremely safe wash. We've washed the vehicle beforehand in terms of a chemical decontamination. The pressure washer's done its thing as well. So now all we're removing is a little bit of maybe remaining traffic film. This is why you get your car coated. It is so easy to clean. Definitely. So easy to clean. And a joy to clean. Like just, it's, it, if you haven't coated your car, folks, it's time. Definitely. Yeah, we do have three, five, and eight year professional grade ceramic coatings and a ton of content online, especially on our YouTube channel if you're watching now, on how to ceramic coat your own vehicle. So if that's something you haven't done yet, first of all, please subscribe. It's free. It helps support the channel. Uh, and second, we're gonna put links down below to our coating videos so you can learn to do this yourself. Exactly. And don't be afraid to apply ceramic coating. It's not that difficult. Nick, we have it all soaked up. We have our mitts that have gone over every square inch of this vehicle. It is now ready for the mechanical decontamination. That's right. So now, Ivan, we have washed the car. Yeah. Some might say, what are you doing with the foam cannon, Nick? Well, we have a little left in there. Just give it a nice little swath very quickly just to use up the rest of that foam. And just for more lubrication for the decontamination towel. Yep. And that stage is coming up now. We had more than I thought in there. That'd be just about foam the whole dang car again. Exactly. And now, now we've been very efficient with our product. It's all gone and it's been a good day. There we go. Now, as far as decontamination goes, I've got iron remover. The iron remover is gonna do that last thing. If we remember the wheels and what the iron remover did to the wheels, there's probably some of that brake dust left on the vehicle. A lot of people will take this iron remover and just spray it willy-nilly everywhere, sort of like what I did with the uh, water spot remover, and just let it dwell and let it sit. That is not the most effective use of an iron remover. The iron remover, especially ours, is designed as a lubricant for your synthetic decontamination towel. One spray on the towel, one spray on the panel. Where you spray it on the panel is where you apply the towel and think of the towel as spreading the iron remover, or think of the iron remover as lube for your towel. So the two go hand in hand, they do the job, and yes, there is contamination down here. Think to yourself, folks, no pressure, okay? The best part about this towel, in my opinion, is how it's got these four sides, and a lot like the Legacy Sponge, only obviously this is different, it's giving you padding, so when you let the incredible suds, the iron remover, and then the width of this towel get in the way of the paint. It's just that extra level of, between you and the unevenness of any pressure you could put on, it's safe on the paint, right? We don't have to polish after. We're not marring the paint when we use the proper lubrication and the proper technique. Exactly, because polishing, despite what a lot of people think, is actually damaging your car every time you do it. And the best clear coat is the factory clear coat. It's a completely different mix or product than what we have available to us in body shops. Really? So the stuff that even the best body shops use is not the same as factory? Never has been, never will be. So they won't, they won't give that to just anybody? 
No, it's the way the cars are manufactured, the way it goes through the booth, et cetera, is a very different procedure. Really? I had no idea. See, I think every detailer should be a painter at some point in their lives, so they sort of like understand paint at a really deep level. That's one goal of mine is maybe to learn painting one day in my spare time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can feel the contamination on the horizontal surfaces, so the hood or the roof. Yeah, and this is a actual carbon fiber roof. It's not just a, oh yeah, I can really hear it. Yeah, it's not just a carbon fiber wrap on this. It is actual carbon fiber. And of course, decontaminating the windows, making them much, much easier to clean in the future. Flipping sides every panel or so. And then when you feel like, ah, I've done four panels, you can rinse this out in water. And then start again, dip it in your incredible suds bucket. One spray there, one on the panel. As Ivan says, put the towel exactly where you put the iron remover. And you might think, is that enough product for lubrication? Well, look at all the suds on the paint, like it is. We're leveraging a little bit of product to go a long way here. That's how you make your bottles last a long time. I'll get don't the windshield. Yeah, and don't forget the mirror. Yep, got the mirror. Don't forget the windshield, everybody. It's full of bug guts, and our perforated synthetic decontamination towel is a bug gut assassin, whether it's on the front bumper or on your windshield. So you could absolutely decide, I just don't want to be doing the towel. That doesn't feel right to me. You could also do the water spot remover, then the contact wash, then spray the car down if you want to use more product with iron remover and then rinse it off. Like, you can eliminate some of these for a more maintenance kind of wash right. if you'd like, yeah. but we're just telling you this is the best way to do it if you want to save product with the iron remover. Definitely, and the iron remover and the clay towel go so well, so hand in hand together. And no, it's not a clay towel, it's a decontamination towel, clay, Everybody goes, if you clay your car, you have to polish it. Yes, I 100% agree with you. If you're claying, you need to polish. If you're using a perforated synthetic decontamination towel, no need to polish whatsoever. You heard it here first. Now I know what you're saying. You're looking at the paint and going, uh, where'd the beading go? Well, the beading is still there. The iron remover requires mechanical agitation to get all of it off. So even though we're rinsing, we're getting a lot of it off, we're still leaving a very thin film of iron remover there. And we have two ways of getting it off. One is mechanically by using a drying towel. Secondly, and the way we're gonna do today, is using quick beads. The quick beads will actually lift that remaining iron remover off the surface, and at the same time, leave a durable ceramic coating behind. Now this car already has a ceramic coating on it, so what we're doing with the quick beads is just giving a little shot in the arm, a little revival. Sir, you shake up the quick beads with the graphene oxide inside before using, and then a quick twist of the nozzle. Very wide fan, getting it on the wheel as well. And you notice as soon as the quick beads touches the surface, the water beading has returned. Now we're in a controlled environment so I can allow myself to go a little further with the quick beads. If you're not in a controlled environment, if you're doing this in direct sunlight, I spray a door, a little bit of a window, and I'm rinsing it right away. I know we say to let it dwell for 30 seconds. I think less is more in terms of, I don't want anything out of my control to happen when I'm outside because the sun can be a powerful thing. So don't let this sit on your paint for too long. No, and then, the magic happens. Now I think we've said this before on our channel, you don't rinse off quick beads. You distribute quick beads using the pressure washer or garden hose. And to distribute it the best, work from the bottom up. Now this car, I'm actually gonna go on a 45 degree angle and just start at the front and work my way to the back of the vehicle. To prevent any possible streaking, just that last little rinse gets everything off. Absolutely, and the water beading is super tight. Uh, and then when you put your towel to this paint, it is oh so slick. So we're gonna finish all this before I touch the towel to paint because more water is gonna be sprayed everywhere, but oh my goodness, I love drying paint after it's at quick beads. Exactly. 
It's so slow. I'm not just making it. Look, if you've used it, guys, if you haven't, trust me on this, it becomes ultra slick. And it feels right. Because I want my paint to not get scratched when I'm drying. Just like I did on the side, I'm going to be rinsing from the bottom up, so from the nose up to the windshield. Let's see it. That way I'm using gravity as my friend to help distribute. And now Ooh. it's time to dry. With the quick beads on it, that is, is its own drying aid, but we like to go a little over the top here. I mean, you could just dry. Right. But that's not as much fun, even though it works great. Yeah, as doing it with ceramic gloss. By the way, that's a pristine dry surface. So go ahead and do this one. But ceramic gloss is our four to six month yeah. ceramic drying aid. People love this stuff. Yeah. And it's just a nice cherry on top of the quick bead sundae. Right. And I like to fold my towel just as you have as well. Gives you a little extra thickness, a little extra protection against areas where you could put a little too much pressure on. So tell me about the waffle towel that we've got in our hands now, Ivan. Oh, the waffle towel has been around a long time. And for uh, the longest time, it was the premier drying towel before the twist loop towels came about. As a professional detailer, I never went to the twist loop towel. I actually prefer the waffle weave because the waffle is a very light and absorbent towel. And I'm doing a couple different techniques with it on this paint, right? I tried the fold it up method, but I'm also able to drag it across the hood like detailers love to do on the gram. Yeah. And both are giving me pristine results. Exactly. I've done a spray on the towel, a spray on the paint, a ceramic gloss. Like, I think it's just choose your own adventure. They all kind of work nice. Yeah. What's your method of choice, Evan? I like to keep it folded, work one area at a time, getting that ceramic gloss in there as well. Do you spray the towel or the, uh, the paint over there? I spray the paint. No, that just, way you just can kind of deposit where you spray and be lubricated ASAP? Yeah, exactly. And when one side gets saturated, just flip your towel, you're back to a dry side. I love how the waffle is so lightweight. Yeah, that is definitely an advantage. But it absorbs a lot of water too. Legend has it that they absorb eight times their weight. Is that right? Yes. And having used them for 20 some years, I can attest to that. But oh my gosh, is adding that ceramic protection to the windshield gonna make my wiper skip? Not at all. Wiper skipping is a factor of improperly aligned wiper blades. So how do they get them aligned if that's happening to them? Because a lot of people ask me about that online. So aligning the wiper blades is basically making sure the blade is sitting at 90 degrees to the windshield. And if it isn't, you simply literally twist the wiper arm to do so. So if Ivan just saved you a new set of wiper blades, how, how do you want them to thank you, Ivan? Subscribe to the channel. Love Hit it. the notification bell and please leave us a comment.